This is a podcast from News Talk Radio 710 WOR. All right, 11 minutes after 8 o'clock in the morning, the guy that wants to run the joint, or one of the people that wants to run the joint, is on my telephone. Joe Loda uh, is running for mayor on the Republican side of life. Hello, Joe. Good morning. Good morning, John. How are you? I am well. Good to talk with you again. Um, it's been tough, isn't it? Just getting just get the, your name out and, and the, and the uh, subjects covered, isn't it, with all this craziness going on? Well, I think that's right, with all the craziness going on. But I keep moving ahead every single day, talking about new proposals, new ways of making sure that the city, you know, uh, it's a safe city. It's a city where our children get educated uh, overall. So, you know, I'm optimistic. I think the fascination with some of the weirdness in the campaign will go away, and the people are going to demand that we talk about the issues. Well, all right. Well, let's uh, talk about what happened uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning, with 17 people being shot in New York City. Uh, where is Joe Loda on getting rid of guns. Well, I think it's important that we that we enforce our gun laws. Seventeen people being shot in New York City on a, on one night over this weekend. It, it it sends an alarm out that we need to be vigilant to make sure that we enforce our laws. Um, and it's critical. I mean, it's happening all around the country, but the increase in New York City is quite noticeable. We need to make sure that the New York City Police Department has all the resources necessary and are backed up in what they need to do to get guns off the street. All right. In the neighborhoods, and I ran down the list just before 8 o'clock, in the neighborhoods where those shootings took place, they're the same neighborhoods. In the, uh, you know, I don't know, they're, they're probably not the same people, but they're the same neighborhoods. These are the same neighborhoods where neighborhood leaders come out and want the police department to be hamstrung on this stop, question, and frisk. Just uh, how far do you think uh, it should go? You know, there's a real schism in the in the communities of uh, color in the city of New York about stop, question, and frisk. You do have some people who are out there saying, let's handcuff the police department, let's take their the, the positions away. Then you have other leaders. For example, David Dinkins, Charlie Rangel, both of whom have come out um, in support of stop, question, and frisk. They're not getting their message out there. Uh, those uh, folks who, who want to uh, handcuff the New York City Police Department are being are the only ones that are getting their reports out there. And it's really unfortunate because there is support in the community, um, in the communities where there are high crime, to see crime being reduced. And see, I've, I've been maintaining that for years, that, you know, it's just sort of the radicals or those that have a personal agenda that, that want to stop any and all of this, and uh, that, the, that the, the residents of these neighborhoods, they want the police there. Absolutely. You should talk. There are a lot of ministers. I spent a lot of time in Brooklyn. There are a lot of ministers in Brooklyn who fully understand the need to get crime down in their communities. And, you know, they're the ones who have to deal with the victims. Uh, they're the ones who have to deal with the family members of the of, of the uh, perpetrators, who these guys are going to be put away. And, you know, they're left hanging there saying, you know what, we need to make sure we're, our communities are safe, our kids get properly educated. And most importantly, and what I talk about when I go to these communities is we need jobs. If we get jobs, these kids won't be on the streets. They won't be, you know, becoming members of gangs. They'll be out there being productive in society. We've got to make New York a place where the private sector wants to expand the number of jobs. All right. How are you going to do that? I mean, that's, e- that's an easy sell line. Everybody uses it. And I'm not being critical because you're, you're absolutely right. But how on earth does government do that? Here's how government does it. It gets out of the way of the private sector. Mayors know how to create jobs in government. That's not what I want to do. I want to be able to create an environment that allows the private sector to create jobs. I believe that there are certain taxes that it can actually be reduced in the city of New York. It'll generate more economic activity and will not cause any burden on our on our. Um, our budget at all. We've got a tax on capital right now. If you're a young company and you don't have any net income, and most startup companies don't have net income, you would think you wouldn't know an income tax in New York, but you do. You have to owe a tax on the amount of your capital that you've got invested in the company. And that's causing a lot of young entrepreneurs to leave New York or not even start in New York. This new generation, the millennials, they call them, are so entrepreneurial. They all want to start businesses. They're all based on, uh, you know, handheld uh, uh computers and and various other devices, and they want to create apps, there's an opportunity to create more and more jobs. The highest growth area of jobs right now in the city is high tech. I want to be able to get out of the way and make sure they can do it. The second area is regulation. You know, John, you can go anywhere in the city of New York, walk into any small business and ask them what their biggest problem is. Their biggest problem is the government of the city of New York. They're under siege from the number of fines, uh, the inconsistent approach that the city is using towards regulations. Many of them are basically saying that 
uh, they could hire more people if the city would get off their back. Well, let's get off their back. Yeah, okay. Well, there's a whole state of New York could probably use a little of that advice. Well, that could be, but, you know, the downstate of New York City in particular is where I'm focused. Upstate has a particular problem. They have a transportation-related problem. A lot of people don't want to live upstate. It's been going on now for 40 or 50 years. During the last 20 years in New York, we've seen tremendous growth in the city, and we've got to make sure that the government allows the growth to continue. Uh, Speaking of transportation, which is something you know about, uh, having been the the head of the MTA, but I'm talking about cars now. What is your position? Are, are Are you somebody that thinks that congestion price or the reducing of the number of cars in the city is something that we got to do in the future? Well, long before we have a real formal debate on congestion pricing, we've got to do everything we can to reduce the number of cars in the city. And there are ways to do it. One of the things that I've proposed when I was at the MTA, and I will definitely do while I'm mayor, is if you look at the end of every one of the subway lines, whether in the north along the Westchester County border or along uh, the border with Queens and Nassau County, at the ends of each one of those lines, I want to be able to build parking garages. And, And basically... Tell the people who are coming in from Nassau County, you know what, don't drive in. Why don't you park in one of these nice, pretty garages that we'll prepare for you and then take the subway in. The subways are safer now. They run 24 hours a day. And it's an opportunity. We've got to do everything we can to mitigate the number of cars in the city by doing smart things, common sense things, before we start saying, well, let's start charging people for coming into Midtown with congestion pricing. That's the last step. The first step is to do the simple things. Now, Joe, we're talking with Joe Loda, a uh, Republican candidate for mayor. I, th- I think in the next 20 years, if we don't do something about car travel and just travel in general, and I'm not just talking about New York here, but I think generically, especially in the Northeast Corridor, uh, we're going to come to a screeching halt. I mean, nobody can get around anymore. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right, but there's also a generational issue here going on as well. Young people are taking mass transit a lot more than their parents did, and they're using it. And, and actually, uh, Detroit's seeing it. And I, I use Detroit in the, in by saying the automotive industry is actually seeing the number of the sales going down to young people, because young people would prefer to take the subways and buses. And that's not just in New York. That's nationwide. It's happening all around the nation. So young people who are naturally more, more conscientious about about the environment, more conscientious about how to get around. So what we need to do in the city of New York to encourage it is certain types of things. We've got to make sure that our subway system is Wi-Fi. We've got to make sure that our buses have Wi-Fi. The number of people who would get on buses if they had access to Wi-Fi and be able to use their computers or their smartphones would be extraordinary. And um, I believe that, you know, there are a lot of things that we need to do to reduce the number well, you know, of cars. Well, the the, uh, another reason they're abandoning their cars is, is, or cars is because they're so expensive, I mean, it just costs a fortune to run one, to buy one, to park one, to, you know, keep it running. Well, I I, I agree. The price of gas has gone up, the price of parking in the city. Um, I mean, it's amazing to me every time I go past a parking garage and look at how much it costs to park for a couple of hours in New York. Really, when the the special says it's $10 for the first half hour, if you read the fine print at the bottom. I know. It scares me when I see that. All right. Speaking of things that are scary, final question this time around, Joe. uh, The numbers that came out last week on uh, third through eighth grader performance math and English, disaster. They, they are, they're, they are, I'm not going to call them a disaster, but I am going to say it's a new test. And if you look at the way New York did, New York City did vis-a-vis the state, we're about the same. And also the other states that came out with their reports. Look, we needed to make sure that our kids get the best possible education. We need to change our curriculum. We need to train our teachers. We need to give them professional development so that our children can be properly trained, but not trained for a test. Go back to when I was in school, both in grammar school and in high school here in New York. What what we what the teachers did is they basically taught the subject up until the last two weeks of the year, and then right before the regents' exam in high school, at least they spent the two weeks prepping us how to do multiple choice. That's exactly how we need to do it. We need to make sure that our children have a core common body of knowledge about whatever the subject matter is, whether it's algebra or geometry or English or history or language arts. It's very, very important that teachers go back to their core and teach the subject matter. And from that, we'll start seeing the results go up. All right. We'll leave it there this time around. Joe, uh, good luck to you, and we'll talk again soon. Thank you, sir. Take care, John. All right. Bye-bye. Joe Loda wants to be mayor of New York City. You've been listening to a podcast from News Talk Radio 710 WOR.